One of the best things about GarageBand is the presets that are available for pretty much every instrument that you could be using, most of the average stuff, right? So there's vocals, there's guitars, there's bass, there's drum presets. All across the board, there's all sorts of good presets. I wanted to show you how to use them the proper way, and so we're gonna get into that right now. All right, so we're gonna be using a song from my Monday music series. If you don't know, if you never watched my channel before, every single Monday I wake up, I write a song, record a song, mix, master the song, and then shoot a video and spit it out Monday night. This one came out about two weeks ago. It's called, It's Gonna Get Better. If you're curious, go ahead and check that out. Anyway, so here is the vocal track right here in the middle. So I wanna show you these presets that are available. So there's bright vocal, compressed vocal, this whole list that you can see here. So today we're gonna to use the classic vocal preset. This is a great preset that I really enjoy using. Very, very powerful one. A bunch of nice effects in it already. There's a de -er if you need it. This particular track doesn't need it. Um, but it's got an EQ, a compressor, a second EQ after the compressor, a tape delay, and the pedal board is there providing reverb, which is, I think, pretty interesting. Um, so anyway, let's, let's just get right to it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is turn them all off, right? We're gonna start with the very first EQ here. We're gonna open it up and we're gonna turn the analyzer on. And as a default, this EQ curve that you see right here, this is the default curve, right? So, um, and I can already tell you with my vocal, with the microphone I was using, this isn't great. It's a little bit heavy in the mid. So I'm gonna show you what I do at this stage of the game, okay? Somewhere up there. Also, I wanna make sure that all the reverbs are off uh, down here. Okay, all the reverb, all the echo, everything's off, okay? Now let's listen. Somewhere up there, amongst those stars. My dreams start running wild. Okay, so right in this range, now when I, thankfully when you push pause or stop here, it'll hold these curves here so you can actually see where you need to be working. So this is what I'm talking about right here where I say I don't like this mid-range bump that it's doing. In this stage of the game, what I'm gonna be basically trying to achieve is an overall good sounding EQ understanding that when I turn on the compressor, it's gonna change a little bit and that I will be then notching out the stuff that it has accentuated, the compressor. I'm gonna be notching it out in that second EQ, okay? So let's just keep going, um, just keep going down the line here. Somewhere up there. Okay, so this right here in the 500 range, we kinda of don't want that. And I'm gonna just bring this down with this curve right here. Uh, and I would like to hear a little bit of more of this between one and 2000 K. So I'm gonna take the green one and I'm just gonna go up a little bit. And in fact, I think that's gonna be a little bit too wide on the queue for me. So I'm gonna come down here and with my magic mouse, I'm just gonna swipe up on the mouse and it's gonna narrow that bandwidth down, right? So now let's listen to it. Somewhere up there, okay. Amongst those stars, okay. Um, so in the 200 range, if you're a regular viewer, you know this is not something I like very much of, but in fact, I think I'm gonna actually touch it up just a little tiny, tiny bit. We're gonna bring that up one and a half dB, and again, I'm gonna come down to the queue, and I'm just gonna narrow it down just a tiny bit. Somewhere up there. That's just gonna add just a little bit of warmth. It's being brought out with a high pass filter, just a touch, just a little bit below 200, um, and I believe, yeah, and also this one right here, this yellow one, and maybe we can narrow that one down a little tiny bit. So I'm gonna click on the ball, gonna come back down to the queue, swipe up on the magic mouse, and this isn't exactly notching, right? Because we're not narrowing it all the way down. We're just trying to get an overall vocal tone here. All right, so the next one I would wanna deal with is just a little bit of this high end. I'm gonna turn it back on and listen. Somewhere up there, Amongst those stars, my dreams start running wild. Okay, so I think somewhere around there. I might bring this high pass filter up just a little bit more as well. Somewhere up there. It might have been a little too much. Okay, let's listen to this in the whole mix. Somewhere up there, amongst those stars. Okay, I think that sounds pretty good. Okay, 
So now the next thing we're gonna turn on is the compressor, okay? The default compressor that's in here is pretty good. I'm actually gonna go in and switch this. Uh, we're gonna come down to voice and we're gonna go to the classic vocal, right? Um, this is the preset that works, I think, best with the classic vocal overall preset, right? So anyway, here we are, classic preset, classic vocal, and uh, let's see what we're doing. And so now we wanna look down here on the dynamic meter, uh, which is this bar right here. Somewhere up there. And I'm just gonna start turning it up until I see these lights activating. Somewhere up there, amongst those stars. My dreams start running wild. I feel like I... Okay, that sounds pretty good right there. Uh, let's actually keep going. I found a way. Because right here in this part of the vocal, it gets a little bit louder. So I just want to see how much the compressor has to work when we get down here. To crack a brand new smile. And now I know that my blood flows. Okay, so in fact, I would probably want that a little bit less. So I'm gonna turn this up a little bit more. And just so you know, this compression knob is affecting the threshold up here in the compressor, okay? Um, so as I turn this knob, you'll see the numbers changing. So I'm gonna set it at negative 35 dB. This is gonna be a pretty moderate um, amount of compression, but it's sort of a modern sound, you know, getting a good even vocal tone is very important and the compressor is the main device doing that, right? Just sort of smoothing it out, right? That's what a compressor does. To crack a brand new smile And now I know that my blood flows Okay, good. So now those peaky moments, which are sort of, you know, you can see represented in the recording itself, uh, aren't as accentuated as before. Now, what you should be hearing though, is that the EQ has changed a little bit because of this compressor being turned on. If I turn the compressor back off, let's just listen a little tiny bit. To crack a brand new smile. Okay, now let me turn the uh, compressor back on. You'll hear the difference. To crack a brand new smile. Right? So it got a little bit heavier in the low end and a little bit of the high end might have come out just a touch, just a touch. To crack a brand new smile. Right? Just a little bit. So we're going to come down here to the second EQ that is after the compressor. And we are just going to try to find those notes again, find those frequencies rather. Um, and we're now gonna sort of try to notch a little bit, okay? And now I know that my blood flows. Okay, so right there in that 500 range, you can see that it's starting to come out again. So I'm gonna take the green one here. Actually, let's get this one. Um, now let's use this one. Let's use that one. And I will say, usually when I am deciding which of these, you know, colored dots to use, I will try to grab the one that's closest to the frequency that I'm trying to affect, right? So in this case, I'm just trying to pull out some of this 500 hertz. Um, and so let's actually get that right on it, okay? And I'm gonna bring that down, let's say 4 dB right now. And again, I'm gonna hit this Q here, swipe up on it, and I'm gonna go pretty dramatic with that. And now I'm gonna bring it down a little bit more. Let's listen to this. I can feel it in my heart. Okay, good. That 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 range right there, that 500 hertz range, um, <clears throat> that's basically a lot of the room sound. That's some of the honk just from my room here, right? So now you can also see that the high end has been brought down just a touch by the compressor. So I'm gonna bring this ball down a little bit and just sort of try to get a bunch of it. And just a touch. With, with EQs, especially on vocals, you don't wanna do anything dramatic. Keep it simple um, and keep it relatively minimal. <laughs> And here I'm walking at 2 a.m. Okay, right here in the 2K sounds a little pronounced as well. So I'm going to bring that down and I'm going to notch it again. The journey it will start. Okay, I think that's getting pretty close. 
We're getting a little heavy in the 200 there, I can see. Um, this is, you know, the fault of the compressor. We're just going to bring that down another, what is that, 3 dB. Let's make, that might be a little much. It's a two and a half. And we're just going to sweep the queue up on that one again a little bit. About as wide as you see this being, right? At the bottom of this frequency, I'm going to aim for having the queue, the bandwidth, be about that range. That looks about right there. So let's go back to the top. Somewhere up there, amongst those stars. Okay, good. So now what I think you should be hearing is you have something with some nice clarity that's been compressed, but also has some good warmth behind it, okay? So now let's come down to the effect. Um, and I like these effects that are sort of loaded in here already. They're, they're nicely done. Um, so this is 16th triplets. Let's turn this guy up here and see what it sounds like. Somewhere, Somewhere up there, amongst those stars. My dreams start running wild. I feel like I... So somewhere around 10% sounds about right to me. One of the things that I truly do love, my regular viewers will know, is the master channel output effects on here. And in this case, we're going to talk about the master echo. This is going to be a longer one. Um, and if we come down to the master channel and look at the effect, this is the echo control. This is the main control window for the master channel effects in general, okay? So this one um, will just be a little bit longer. You can hear it. Uh, let's go back to the track. Somewhere up there. Um, um, Let me turn it up just so you can hear what it's doing. Somewhere up somewhere there. Up there um, okay, um, so this is probably way too loud. So let's, let's put it around here. Somewhere up there amongst those stars. My dreams start running wild. I feel like I have found a way. Okay, I think that sounds pretty good. I don't want to hear the first part of the lyrics, right, uh, in the delay. I like to hear just the last part of the, the lyrics in the delay. If you keep it lower, you know, that way you won't he really hear that first time through. You could automate that, but, you know, to do that through the entire track would be quite time consuming and we're not going to do that. So the last thing um, I'm going to turn on here is just because it's a nice little reverb is the pedal board reverb. Um, I'm going to actually switch this from vintage up to, where is it? The boutique one I like. Somewhere up there. And let's start turning it up from here. And it's the same thing uh, down here in the lower right hand corner. Same control as the mix control on this pedal. Okay. So let's, let's, let's use this one down here. Somewhere up there. Amongst those stars. My dreams start running wild. I feel like I have found a way. Okay. I think that sounds pretty good right about there. Now, let's add something to this preset. We're going to go into the editor window, and we're going to hit track, and we're going to turn on the good old pitch correction. As soon as you do this, as soon as you uh, come in here and turn on the pitch correction, it will then be found right here at the bottom of the plugin window where it wasn't before, okay? I just, you know, I'm not the world's best singer, so I need a little pitch correction. Sue me. <laughs> Somewhere up there amongst those stars my dreams start running wild i think 70 sounds good right there i think 70 is pretty much where that needs to be um when i'm using the pitch corrector i'll say this um it's not always beneficial to limit it to the key i will sometimes limit it to the key for backup vocals things that don't move a ton if you're a kind of singer that sings a lot of like bluesy notes a lot of sevenths and you know um, the limit to the key feature will really not do what you want it to do there because some of those blues notes aren't really in the major scale, obviously, right? So uh, let's leave it off. In general, we leave it off. On a backup vocal where there's like long notes that are held, if I feel like it's wavering a tiny bit, I'll use the limit to key and it'll hold that note a lot better. So the last thing that I would do to this vocal is go through it with a little bit of automation. So to turn on the automation, it's this button right here in the channel window. And as soon as you click anywhere in here, it'll turn on this yellow line. 
Now, you have probably already noticed that up here, this is my original vocal um, that's already been treated. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit on this. I'm gonna, let's see, close this down. And overall, I'm just gonna take a look at this track, right? So I have like low sections here, hot sections here, hot section and a low section here. So because I feel like, like the very top, I mean, you can see that I feel like I wish this wasn't here, but um, I will just grab a little bit of the top here where it's just a little bit lower and just bring it up a touch. I mean, that's like not even one full dB. That, that's about one dB. Listen to the difference. Somewhere up there amongst those stars, my dreams start running wild. Right? It just adds the tiniest bit. If I turn it off, listen to it again. Somewhere up there, amongst those stars, my dreams start running wild. Now, the big difference though, like it's just because of those first few words, uh, and then when you get down here, it's a little bit louder. The compressor, I don't want to over compress this, right? So I'm gonna use the automation to just sort of help me do a, a very, very basic vocal ride. Um, that's the terminology that we use. Um, this is a, as simple as a vocal ride can get where you're just sort of grabbing large chunks of it. All right, so um, and the next one I would come do, as you can see, I've already done it, are these big ones here. And I'm just gonna make one, two, three, four, and I'm just gonna grab this middle section and bring it down, let's call that full, where, where was it actually, let's look. Uh, this at 3.6 and let's just bring this down to 1.5 good enough okay so now when we get to this section and now I know that my blood flows okay so maybe that was a little bit too much let's bring it back up a little bit just a little half DB change there oh that my blood flows I can feel in my heart. Okay, I think that that's what I needed to do. The last thing I would do, just as I sit here and listen to this, I think I'm going to bring up the low end a little bit more in the second EQ. Uh, we're going to grab it in the like around 100 to 130 hertz range. And here I'm walking. Yeah, it's a little bit. Let's actually bring this down a touch. And let's bring this up around 130. That's where I sort of like my vocals uh, to be bumped up a little tiny bit. So let's do that up to 2.5 dB. At 2 a.m. The journey it will start. Yeah. I mean, basically, you know, I, I could probably sit here and like really dial this in again if I wanted to. But essentially, that's the process, you know? So remember, the first EQ is an overall sound that you really wanna get. Um, then you're gonna come down to the compressor and you know dial it in so it's squishing the, the peaky moments. Um, <clears throat> and then you're gonna use the second EQ to really notch out any artifacts that the compressor has accentuated. Then it's time for effects. And that kind of stuff is totally up to you depending on the track, the song, your performance, all that kind of stuff, the effects. Um, that's obviously very subjective, but this is the process of how you do these things, right? This is what I recommend at least. Um, do them one by one and then, you know, listen to it in the whole mix. You know, there's a debate. Should you be mixing vocals as soloed or in the full mix? I like to do a little bit of both. When I need to like really concentrate on certain frequencies, like if I'm like, oh, where's that like nasal honk or where's that room noise coming from? I need to solo it and I need to sort of concentrate, look at the analyzer, really understand where that sound is. Then I'll turn the whole mix back on and EQ and compress with the whole mix on because it gives you a better sense of what it will sound like overall in the final product. So that's about it, you guys. As always, thank you so much for watching my videos here on GarageBand and beyond. I've been doing this for a very long time and I really appreciate that you guys are still watching and enjoying and still learning because that's the goal. GarageBand is super, super fun to use, super easy to use. Um, it is my favorite DAW that I use all the time. I do mix songs for people. I master songs for people. If you're curious about that, find my website, GarageBand and Beyond. I do have a Patreon page if you like these videos and you want to see them come out more often and just, you know, support the channel in general because the ad revenue is pathetic. Um, yeah, find my Patreon page. Besides that, have a wonderful day and I will talk to you on, well, I'll sing at you on Monday. All right, peace and love.